Good to see you here in the auditorium today of the Northside Baptist Church. We welcome you here. May God bless you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we appreciate the fact that you've tuned in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping to now we're coming up. We can be an inspiration to everyone. So if you call a friend on the phone out there and have them to tune in, you'll be doing them a favor and us as well. We appreciate it. That was a very unusual thing that happened about 20 years ago. I'm a Jean and her three children came to church here regularly every service. And her husband was unsaved. And many times she came down and said, Pastor Edwards, I want you to pray that God will save my husband. And she was willing to pay the price of whatever it took for God to save her husband. She's on the way back from Everton, her and her three children. By the way, her oldest daughter was engaged to get married to a soldier who was in the Korean conflict. And so when he came home, they were to get married. And they'd gone down to Everton to get school clothes, get ready for school that fall. And on the way back, a truck with one of these well diggers on the thing turned over on top of the car and killed all four of them instantly. We had the four coffins right here in front of the pulpit stand and preach their funeral. All four of them went out in eternity then I went down to Everton to the funeral home while they had their bodies there and talked to her husband about getting saved. He is weeping. He said, Preach Edwards, I'm ready. I'm ready to get right with God. And I led him to Christ. And he's been living for God faithfully since that time. In fact, he sings gospel songs and a great blessing. But it took the warping out of that entire family to get that man to see he needed to get saved. We can't understand these things and be worth it all when we come to the end of life's journey. God explains these things to us and why they happen. Romans 8, 28 is still the infallible word of God. I want you to take your Bible today and turn to Psalms chapter 62. Psalms chapter 62 for the reading of my text today is page uh, 628. And while you're turning there, I want to say this. If God spares me two weeks and a half, on the last day of this month, I will complete 40 years of daily broadcasting the gospel from the classic city of Athens, Georgia, seven days a week. I thank God for this open door and opportunity of preaching the gospel. God has kept the door open for 40 years will be in two and a half weeks. God has raised up people that love him and appreciate the ministry to help keep the program on the air. And God keeps the record. Each year we give the people an opportunity, if they so desire, to make an appreciation gift of a dollar for each year I've been on the air, which will be 40 years, which would be $40. And if God should move upon anyone's heart to make that contribution, of the gift of $40 of appreciation for the 40 years. It'll be used to help spread the gospel. It'll be used to help pay for radio time. And God, I believe, will keep the record and God will bless you for it. I want you to pray for me. If you're not getting our daily broadcast, tune to this station where you're now listening. Get it Monday through Saturday at 12 o'clock noon. Write in and get what we offer on the air, the book on the Holy Spirit. Brother David Lewis's book on the Song of Solomon. We send you a brochure on our proposed Holy Land tour. We send you a list of our cassette tape. We have 340 listed. By the way, today's tape will be number 343. We're speaking on the power of the Word of God. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. I want you to pray for me and write to me and stand by this home mission work. A lot of shut-ins, a lot of deranged people, a lot of people confined, a lot of people disabled. To be in the house of God, look forward to this ministry every day. They get their spiritual food from the message of Blessed Hope Table. I'm glad that we're able to carry the gospel to them. 
So you pray for me and write to me. While you turn into Psalms chapter 62, I heard a man tell the other day about uh, three families that went out to a restaurant to eat. And there's two uh, businessmen, executives and their wives, and a man from uh, Japan, he and his wife had come over to meet with them to talk about business, of course. And the man and his wife from Japan could speak good English, but they're never going out and eating with American families. They didn't know how they was going to come out at the restaurant. And so they went in and sat down to eat, and one of the American men said to his wife, said, pass me the sugar, sugar. And she passed him the sugar. The other man said to his wife, said, pass me the honey, honey. She passed him the honey. The man in Japan didn't know hardly what to say. He said to his wife, said, pass me the tea bag. <laughs> she passed him the tea. All right, so let's turn, would you please, to Psalms chapter 62 for the reading of God's wonderful word. Truly my soul waiteth upon God from whom cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine mischief against the man? Ye shall be slain all of you as a bowing wall shall ye be and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly, sailor. My soul waiteth thou upon God, my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, he is my defense, and I shall not be moved. He is, my, he is God my salvation, and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my ref refuge is in God. Trust in him at all uh, times, in all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Sealer. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are together, lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression. And become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth to God. Also unto the Lord, O Lord, belongeth mercy. Thou rendest to every man according to his work. Verse 11, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, power belongeth to God. I'm speaking today on the power of the Word of God. There was a little boy one time that noticed a black book, of course, which was a Bible up on the shelf. He'd never seen it used or open or read. And he said to his mother, and you need to use that Bible. The Bible is no good to you unless you use it. You need to read it, meditate in it. Now we're concerned about fruit bearing, but we forget that Jesus said the seed is the word in Acts chapter 8 and verse 11. We're concerned about power to break up and melt hearts, but we seem to forget that God said his words like a hammer and a fire in Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29. Nothing any more important than the word of God in the way of literature, in the way of power, in the way of God honoring, because God promised to use his word, the infallible word. And God's word is powerful. There's a man in prison one time, he saw a rat coming along and had something in his mouth. And he killed the rat and took what he had out of his mouth and it was a portion of the scriptures. And that man read those scriptures and repented and got right with God. God saved him. See, God's word is powerful. God even used the rat to convey the message to him through that scripture. There's a man in Atlanta one day saw a track. I saw he didn't know it was a gospel track floating down a little drain where the rain had washed it down. He reached down and picked it up, dried it off, let it dry, and lo and behold, he looked at it. It was a gospel track set out by Evangelist Oliver B. Green. He read that track. God saved him. He became convicted of his sins, repented, and the Lord saved him. See, God used his word and on his word. That's why you ought to give it out, talk about it, give out tracks. Read it. There's nothing like it. Now God's word has power to convict of sin. 
Acts chapter 2 and verse 37. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Had not Simon Peter used the word of God on that day called the day of Pentecost, he had never brought those people under conviction. But when he quoted from the Psalms and used the word of God and the Holy Ghost used that word to stir up those people and crucify Jesus, and they were pricked in their hearts and said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And they, of course, were told what to do and they got right with God. God's word is power to convict of sin. Use the word on sinners. Use the word on your loved ones without God. Use the word every time you have a chance. God on it. Secondly, the word of God has power to regenerate. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. In James chapter 1 verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be kind of first fruits of his creatures. We have gotten, we've begotten by the word of truth, the Bible tells us. And 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6, Paul said, I have planted Apollos water, but God giveth the increase. See, God uses the word of God to regenerate, to make alive, uh, to cause people to become alive in Christ Jesus. And it's the word that God uses with the Spirit of God to do this job. Number three, God's word has power to produce faith. Now, a lot of people don't have faith, but if they would hear the scriptures, God's able to give them faith through the word of God. Now, there's a gift of faith that God gives to some of his children because some have stronger faith than others. And, but faith for salvation comes through the word of God. Romans chapter 19, uh, chapter a 10 or other verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. That's the only way a sinner. Will ever come to know God. Is by the hearing of the word of God. Because through that comes faith. You can't get a man saved apart from the word of God. And you go out here and reap a crop. While you sow no seed. The word of God must be used. In Acts chapter 16 verses 31 and 32. And this, these people here, the Philippian jailer, want to know what to do to be saved. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved and thy house. Verse 32, they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and all that went in his house, and they come to know God. They used the word of God. Paul and Silas did this to reach this jailer and to reach his family. And they reached through the word. That's all the way you can do it. In John chapter 20 and verse 31, but these are written that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that believing you might have life through his name. You don't do the work of God and win people of Jesus Christ without the word. God's word is powerful. It's the dynamo of God. It's the power of God unto salvation. All those that believe it. Number four, the word of God has power to cleanse. Now, you know why a lot of church members live worldly and get out here and get involved in sinful things that dirty their lives? The reason is because they don't go to God's mirror, the Word of God, and see themselves in the Word and therefore look to God for cleansing. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 and 26. He said, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That it might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now you keep your life clean and spotless through the word of God. By reading your Bible, by searching the scriptures, by seeing your need and asking God to cleanse you. In the Psalms 119 and verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. That's why you have many dirty Christians today, dirty church members. They never take a bath by reading the word of God, by reading God's book and seeing their need and asking God to cleanse them from all of their sins. You ought to read every day. It's a mirror. It's the word of God. It's a wash basin, as it were. And keep yourself clean by reading the word of God. That you need to do. Number five, God's word is power to build up. In Acts chapter 20, verse 32, And now, brethren, I commend you to God, I commend you to God, 
and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. See, you are built up by the word of God. You become strong by the word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Do you know why it's so easy for church members to sit at home and use just any kind of little pet excuse in order to stay out of God's house on Sunday morning and Sunday night? You know why? They are not grown up like they ought to be in the Word of God. They're not strong Christians. Many of them are just babies. And they don't see the real need and value of being faithful and be found in God's house and not on top of the mountain somewhere or some other place riding around and on a pleasure trip when they ought to be in God's house on the Lord's day. You don't build churches unless you have faithful church members. And one of the most important things that we find in the Bible in regard to Christianity to be in the church is the fact of being faithful. God wants his people to be faithful. Faithful church members that are deep in the Bible and love God like this year don't let in little significant things keep them away from God's house on Sunday. Because they're deep in the book, they love God, they love God's house, they honor God, they honor God's house, they honor God's word. They don't dishonor the house of God by not being there. Now you need to realize that the Bible says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Most of our church members today are still on the bottle. I'm talking about the milk bottle. Some of them might be on the booze bottle, but I hope not, but I know they're on the milk bottle. And they just take milk. That's all. You can't feed them. They're unconcerned about spiritual things. They don't care. The preacher can spend a whole week digging out the meat of God's word and sitting at the table on Sunday. If they can find a pretty good excuse. They'll sit at home. They don't care anything about coming and feeding them God's table at God's word. Don't, they don't care about it. Now, there's something wrong somewhere in the life of people like that. I don't care who they are. God expects his people to be faithful Desire the sense of miracle which you may grow thereby, and the stronger you become in the word, uh, the more you go and desire to get more of the word. While well, you take out here in the in the physical world, in the secular world, you take a man that weighs three hundred pounds. That man, if he's a big strong man, he has a great desire to eat than a man that's a slim gym and only weigh about ninety pounds. The man that weighs about 90, he doesn't eat much. He doesn't have too big an appetite. He's, he's not concerned about filling his stomach. Inside his stomach looks like a spoon. And it doesn't bother him. But that big old fellow that weighs about 350, brother, he can't get enough. Now you can go out to the shopping center. And I guarantee if you meet some of these big stout people that weigh two or 300 pounds, they either got an ice cream in their hand, a cup or something, or they're eating something. They're thinking about eating all the time. Now the same thing applies to God's people. If you're anemic, if you're poor and weasley, you don't care anything about your Bible. You don't care anything about coming to church and being fed the word of God. You don't care anything about Sunday school. You don't want to be taught anything. You're sick. Uh, spiritually speaking, you're anemic. You're poor. You're weasley. You got no appetite. You're, you're pale and anemic and emaciated uh, as a spiritual person. And it's all because you fail to feed upon God's word. And any little thing can come along. And you'll use that as an excuse not to be in God's house on the Lord's day. Now you know I'm telling you the truth whether you like it or not. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Number five, God's word is, has the power to make wise. In Psalm 119 verse 30, the instance of thy word giveth light, giveth understanding unto the simple. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be per perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. See, the Bible said the word of God will make you wise. Well, you have so many people today, if you ask them uh, to find a chapter in the Bible or a book in the Bible, many church members have been saved for years, couldn't find it. They might search and search and search before they could find the book of Jonah. And other books in the Bible might be hidden in the Old Testament. Because they never studied the Bible, they don't search out the script, they can tell you where it is. 
as appalling today for church members been saved for years and years to be so ignorant pertaining to the scriptures. Now that's ignorance because you want to be ignorant. That's no reason for any man or woman to be ignorant pertaining to the word of God if you've been saved a number of years. If you'll search the scriptures, listen to the preacher, follow him in the word of God, remember what he has to say, and learn in the scriptures. It'll make you wise. And you're going to need some wisdom in these last days. We're living in perilous times and momentous days. There's never been days just like these. You're going to need the Bible in days that lie ahead. There's some dark days out John, in the future. I heard a preacher say the other night. said he's preaching to his people. said, now listen, people, get out of debt. Get your bills paid off. Cut up your, your credit cards. Get these things off of you. There's some dark days out John, and you're going to be in trouble if you've got a lot of debts on you. And I'll say to you today, don't go out here running into debt every day. You got some trouble ahead of you. There's going to be some dark days out yonder. Might come a time when you may lose everything you have. Now get out of debt. Pay for what you got so you'll have it in case you get out of a job. And tap your credit cards and cut them up and throw them away. You don't need them in the first place. Now some of you businessmen out there in the real listeners listen to me right now. You don't like that. Well, I don't like people uh, going in debt and stacking so much on the credit cards, paying all that high interest out there, and they're going to the store and they'll buy twice as much of the credit card and they're paying cash for, and stick themselves in debt and go all the year paying those uh, debts off and paying high interest. I don't do that myself. I don't have any credit cards. I don't. I just. I wouldn't have one if you give it to me. Well, they mail them to me once in a while. I throw them in the trash can. I don't fool with them. And you go out here and you ram yourself in debt, bite off more than you can chew. It causes problems between a husband and wife. Finances are called a uh, difficulty will cause problem between a husband and wife, between family and children. And you go out here and you get stuck in debt. And you one of these days down the road after this election, uh, you know what might happen after this election? You might wind up without a job. We just don't know. There's some dark days. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, if you're wise, you'll get them debts paid off while you can, and you'll stay out of debt. And so if it comes to the time when you don't have a job, or you're disabled to work, that you won't know about every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the country. And people be calling you and sending you bills every week. Get out of debt and stay out of debt. And pay cash for what you buy. If you don't have cash, then don't buy it. Just do without it. And you'll be far better off. It's too easy to go in debt to then get God's people stuck in debt. And then they can't pay their bills. And church members fussing, wives and husbands fussing and quarreling about their bills. And, and they, they lose out spiritually and they don't have, not out of fellowship with God and can't get along. They're irritable and snapping and biting at one another because they can't pay their bills. And that's what the devil wants. If he can get you in that shape, he'll tie you up. So he'll have you so you'll be ill and irritable and oh, everybody in the country. You don't need to do that. It hurts you spiritually. Number seven, God's word has the power to give assurance of eternal life. You want to know whether or not you're saved? First John chapter five, verse 13. These things are written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life and you believe on his name. You ought to read that. First John chapter five, verse 13. You'll know you're saved. God said you can know it. Some jaybird comes along, he says, well, you don't know you're saved till you die. People like that usually wind up in hell. You better find out whether or not you're saved. Now, you can know from the word of God you're saved. You've got to believe this book. It's not according to your feeling, what you did, or, uh, the, your reformation, or education, or termination, or whatnot. It's what God says in this book. Believe what he said in this book. Believe the Bible. Repent and believe the Bible. Believe in Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, he said, he that, uh, uh, John 3, 36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's God's word. You believe it? It's God's word. Number eight, the word of God has power to bring peace into the heart. In Psalm chapter 35, verse 8, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace into his people and to his saints. The word of God will bring peace to your heart. Do you have turmoil? Are you perplexed? Are you confused? Are you worried? Are you a child of God? If you are, 
The word of God can bring peace to your heart. Romans 8, 28 has never been torn out of the Bible. It's still right there. For we know that all things work together for good of those that love the Lord that he called according to his purpose. So you must remember the word of God can bring peace to your heart. Try the book. You've tried everything else. Run to the doctor. Run to the lawyer. Run to the sheriff. Run everywhere in the country. Run to every Tom, Dick, and Harry with your problems. And all you need to do is get right with God and get in this book and solve all of that. There's a lot of people who stay out of the doctor's office, stay away from the lawyer's office, stay away from the sheriff's department if you get in the book. Try the book. Run yourself crazy around here doing everything else but come in the right way. If you're a child of God, go to the book. Go to the Word of God. You can find peace in the Word of God. God will give it to you. Number nine, the Word of God has power to produce joy. You know how a lot of people sit around and, and act like uh, they've uh, drank a half gallon of vinegar and drank about a quarter of persimmon juice and, and eat about a half dozen deal pickles. You know why they look like that? They're not in the Word. The word of God gives joy. A lot of people sit around like they thought the morning laws going home and stay with them about six months. You need to get in the book, in the word of God. God gives joy. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Thy word was found, I did eat them. And they, thy word was unto me the joy and rejoice of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord of hosts. The word of God, the book of God give you joy. Now the dear old slave one time, he's reading his Bible, and every time he started reading, he started shouting. His master didn't like it. He said, I'm going to stop that man from reading that Bible. Dear old black man, and he was reading his Bible and shouting. And so the, the, uh, the master took the word of God away from him. Put him out in the corn crib one day, and he's shucking shucks off the corn. He got started shouting out there and scattering corn all over the crib. The master went by and said, look at here. He said, what are you shouting about now? You don't have the Bible. He said, no, I said, I, I don't have the Bible. But so I just remembered that uh, the Bible said uh, my sin is gone in the sea of forgetfulness and in the depth of sin. And he said, there's no bottom out where my sin went. And said, my sin will never uh, be brought up against me anymore. And, and he started shouting praise and God and throwing corn all over the place. He just remembered what was in the book. Now you get in the word of God and you can find joy. In John chapter 15 verse 11. These things are spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be full. The happiest people in the world are those that get in the book. Old Dr. B.B. Caldwell. I've gone to his study. And the old man had been studying there in the study. And been spending hours in the word of God. And after a while he'd jump up. Click his heels together and clap his hands together. Start praising God and walking around in the room. And he just had, I just had to let him cool off. I said, what happened, Doc? He said, Brother, God just revealed to me a wonderful truth in the Word of God, and I can't behave myself. I said, just go ahead, brother, and help yourself. And I'll just join in with you. That old man found joy in the book, in the Word of God. A lot of people do that. You can find it there. Just go to that book, and you can find joy in the Word of God. Number 10, the Word of God has power to produce patience and comfort and hope. All of us need more patience. And we can use some comfort. And all of us need hope of course. In Romans chapter 14 verse 4. And whatsoever things were written before I were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The Bible says we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You find patience. You find comfort. You find scripture in the word of God. You find hope brother in the word of God. It's there. Dig into it. Keep on digging into it. Search it out. Apply it to your heart. Simulate it. Cogitate up on it. Memorize it. Go to bed with it on your mind. Get up with it on your mind. I'm talking about the true biblical word of God. God's wonderful book. Then we find number 11. The word of God has power to protect us from error and sin. If you read these scriptures, I won't take time to give them to you, to you because my time's about up. In Acts chapter 20, verses 29 through 32, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 15, and Psalms 119, verse 11, if you'll find those scriptures and read them, they will help you and protect you from error and protect you from sin. What did Jesus do in Matthew 4 and Luke 4? 
When the devil came tempting him, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. He used the word of God on him. Set him in high gear. Now, when you use the word of God on the devil, he can't stand that. The devil starts tempting you. You can't seem to get your prayers through. Just start reading the Bible out loud. Read it just as loud as you can. Just keep on reading. Praise God for a moment or two and keep on reading. Say hallelujah, praise God, and read it some more. And then read it some more. Start shouting the victory and you look around. You can't find the devil anywhere. He can't stand that. Like pouring hot lead in his boots. He's got to get moving on. And he can't stand it. Use the word on the devil. And uh, that will give you uh, peace and protection from error and sin. Number 12. The word of God is a comfort in the hour of death. Psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Old man died one time. Family stood around and said, Bring me the book. He is a man of many books. They said, Bring me the book. They said, Daddy, bring you the book. He said, What book do you want? He said, uh, Said, what other book do you have but the Bible in a time like this? Said, bring me the Bible, the Word of God. That old man in his dying hour wanted the book, the Word of God, nothing like it. Now, I don't know any book I'd rather pillow my head on in my dying hour than the infallible Word of God. It's that book. Try reading it sometime. Memorize some of it. Use it. God will help you. There's a gentleman one time, businessman, went over to England, bought a microscope, started using it on flowers, saw the, the crystals and the pestles in the flowers, so beautiful, he'd never seen them before with that microscope. He was so proud of that thing, he carried it back to China, and of course, it's very obvious, he was a rice eater. He got his rice together to fix it for his meal, and he thought he'd take a look at it through that microscope. And lo and behold, when he did, he saw there's a lot of little tiny insects crawl around in that rice and on that rice that he'd never seen before. The man, that baffled him. He said, I can't give up my rice. What in the world am I going to do? He said, I know what I'll do. I'll just throw away the microscope and go and eat my rice anyway. That's what he did. Now, beloved, listen. You can't throw away the word of God and get by. You must take the book. You say, well, I, I'm not going to do this, not going to do that. I know I should, and I just, uh, in order so I won't think about it, I won't know about it, I just hide my Bible and not read it. You don't get by like that. The little insects are still in the rice and on the rice, although they threw away the microscope. And just because you don't want to face reality and don't want to face what God says in this book, you can throw that Bible away, but just the problem's still there. You take the book of God, nothing like it. The word of God is powerful, sharpening a two-edged sword. God will use it. The message and the singing will be on tape number uh, 343, in case you're interested, on the power of the word of God. Let's stand our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray today that you'll take the message and use it. We thank you for your infallible word, a lamp on our feet, light on our pathway. Quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Thank you, Father, for the book. There's nothing like it. We thank you for it. It's worn out the animals, the hammer of many infidels, and yet the old animal is here, still here. The word of God. Thank you, Father, for the blessed book. Speak to our hearts today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, while Debbie plays... If there's someone here that need to come forward, would you come? If there's someone here that needs salvation or you need to come back to God or join the church for any reason that God prompts you to come forward, would you come? How about it? Why we wait?
we love our little ones and we don't want to die without God. Father, I pray that you honor this prayer and concern about this daughter, concern about her father. Conquer heart and help the queen to trust God that you would do something about it that he might get saved before he leaves the world. We pray that you will. We know it's not your real vision for it, Lord. We pray for him. We pray for Sherry. We thank you for it. Let's be a good our father. Help her encourage her heart and her water. Our God and Savior, Daddy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.